Pokemon Black, a beautiful return to the franchise with stunning visuals, an entirely new roster of friends, and phenomenal balanced gameplay. So what if I took all of that and threw it out the window by only using six Pokemon, forcing them to be level one forever and attempting to beat the game that way? By the way, this is also doubling as a first playthrough of the game. I've never played Gen 5 before. Let's get into it. <laughs> I woke up in my house when two kids barged in and forced me to battle them. Our first Pokemon is Spirit Tomb, which is a ghost type. Strangely enough, both Tepig and Snivy can't hit us since they only know normal type moves and we win the first battle. But trust me, that's the easiest part of this entire challenge. After unintentionally destroying my rivals Charon and Bianca, we meet Professor Juniper and she leads us outside to take our first step on our Pokemon journey. Oh boy, do I regret that first step. Why wow, Lillipup has appeared. Oh my god, cool. Okay, let's run. <laughs> There's like no shot I want to be... Oh, wait, we couldn't get away. No. You see, wild Pokemon won't actually allow me to run away because my Pokemon are so weak. Repel items don't work either, since they only repel wild Pokemon who are lower level than the first Pokemon in my party. There's nothing lower than level one, and wild Pokemon only get stronger from here. But that's a problem for future Eric. We've got a town to explore. Some guy screams about the apocalypse in the town square for a good hour, and we meet a guy named after the alphabet. Maybe it was a bad idea to explore the town, so I make an escape to the next route. Bianca drags us back to this madness, though, and demands a battle. Ready or not, here I come! Oh, God. That's also the issue. I haven't played this game ever, so I don't know when we're about to step into a battle or not. So we really have to be on our toes for all of this. Leapup probably doesn't know any moves that can hit Spirit Tomb, so we'll just curse here. Okay, never mind. It knows Odor Sleuth, which is awful, because then it can hit us. We'll still Pain Split, though, just in case, maybe. Yeah. There's literally nothing we can do there. But here's something I thought of that's kind of really cool. Since Spirit Tomb can't carry us all game and has a speed stat of <clears throat> four, I had to get creative to make sure our Pokemon can still use moves before getting one shot by my opponents. Enter Magnemite. Magnemite has the ability Sturdy, which specifically states that Magnemite can't be one shot and leaves it at one HP. Coupled with moves, Toxic and Protect, I can poison the opponent's Pokemon, then protect for a turn to stall. I take that approach with Bianca's Lillipup, and it does absolutely no damage to my Pokemon. Bianca sends in Tepig, though, and I quickly have to change my strategy. Okay, okay, he's gonna use Ember. Right, it's super effective. But, we have Sturdy, so we still live. And we restore our health with the Orenberry. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Recycle, and Recycle takes our Orenberry back. Right, so we have Sturdy again, so we endured the hit, and then we have Recycle, which brings back our Orenberry, which then heals us back to full. <laughs> so unless it hits twice, or unless we get burned from the Ember, we should be able to hang on until Poison kills it. And there we go. With that out of the way, I head on over to the first gym. I use similar strategies for the introductory trainers, but Silen is a different story. This time, I lead with my third Pokemon, Pineco. It knows Toxic Spikes, which poisons whichever Pokemon Silent switches into. Oh yeah, our Pineco has the ability Sturdy as well, so it can actually set up poison without dying immediately. With his entire party effectively badly poisoned, all I need to do is Recycle Stall with Magnemite. We just have to wait until we are our one shot. Nice, okay, perfect. So this is where the strategy comes back into play. So we endured the hit, but we have Wait, I'm sorry, what happened to our Orenberry? Oh my god, we didn't end the last battle with the Orenberry. So the last battle that we used the strategy used up our Orenberry, because we recycled, and then it died. Wow. The Orenberry was a strategy that I could only use once. Our stall was absolutely useless in the fight. Before the gym leader, I picked up three Orenberries from Charon in the building over, but this means that we can only recycle stall three more times over the course of the entire game, since you can't buy or grow berries in Pokemon Black. Unless I figure out some way to reliably get more Orenberries, Magnemite just became a lot less useful. So let me introduce you to a Pokemon that's a little bit more useful than that, Aaron. Aaron, like Pineco and Magnemite, has the ability Sturdy, so it can take one attack before fainting. However, this Aaron is a bit more special than that. It knows the move Endeavor. Endeavor is a move that makes the Pokemon's health equal to our health. When paired with a Sturdy level one Pokemon, 
This becomes our crowning savior for the first gym fight. And with that, I beat the first gym. And it only took just under two hours. Oh god, if this is possible, this is going to take forever. I think this is a good chance to address the Pokemon that I'm using. Every single one of them, all six of them, are a real Pokemon with real movesets and abilities that you can acquire yourself. That's why I don't have something like a Shedinja or Lapunny. They don't exist at level 1. But you know what does exist? The subscribe button. That's so shameless! But anyhow, I continue my journey and one of the professor's assistants gives us the HM for cut. So when making this, I neglected to remember that we had to use HMs for this, so that's going to be fun. After some extensive research on the subject, though, I learned something interesting about the game. Apparently, in all of the region, every nook, cranny, and secret castle will get to that. The only required HM is cut for this single tree right here. Behold, Yggdrasil, the god tree which bounds mere mortals to an endless suffering... That aside, we find more Team Plasma grunts, beat them up, and mourn the loss of Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Okay, we want to also dodge as many trainers as possible, because we don't gain experience. There's no reason for us to actually, like, battle trainer, you know? On the way to the second gym, I break into the local kindergarten, disrespect this young child with my baby Pokemon, and cut in line to ride the slide. This has been the most disappointing experience of my entire life. Team Plasma steals a little girl's Pokemon as well, and like all the other issues happening locally, it's up to us to help out. Okay, let's put Aaron in front so we can roar out of uh, wild Pokemon back. Literally the first one. What? It's a shiny? That's like the third Pokemon we've encountered. What? He's like, no, it's level 11. I can't catch it. I'm so sorry. It's not you, it's me. Do it for the challenge. After giving the little girl her Pokemon back, we attempt to get into the second gym, but are blocked by Mr. Alphabet himself. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but spoiler, I lost. I lost a lot. N doesn't even have a difficult lineup. He opens with Pidove, switches into Timber, and finishes off with Timpole. It was my strategy that was lacking. Time to switch it up. I open with Pineco and immediately Toxic Spikes to poison N's entire team. When Pineco faints, I switch into Magnemite, which poisons Padove. Passing the faint switch to Aaron, I use Endeavor to equal our health and stall out the rest of the poison damage. Three Pokemon to defeat one level 13 Padove. But here's where it gets interesting. I stall out the Tim Pole a little more with Spiritomb and bring out the fifth Pokemon of our team, Volbeat. Volbeat is our guarantee in all cases to make our Pokemon go first. It knows the ability Prankster, which gives any status move that Volbeat knows priority over any other move. I use this to my advantage and get a lucky double team evasion, stalling out the rest of Timpole's poison. Okay, now we have Timber, and this is where I think we win. We endeavor, because we have Sturdy here. We're one health, this is the plan. We endeavor, it's now at one health, and then it gets poisoned and dies. And we just barely make it with one HP. That was crazy, dude. N is a fan favorite character in Pokemon Black and White, but I swear his team is specifically crafted to make this challenge impossible. Finally, we're able to enter the second gym, and after reading a whole bunch, we fall through the basement and come across Lenora. I use the tried and true poison endeavor strategy, and her signature watchdog falls, granting us the basic badge. On our journey to the next gym though, I started to realize that the one thing I didn't think to be hard in this challenge, wild Pokemon, was becoming a huge problem. The wild Pokemon just keep getting stronger, and because of that, it was increasingly difficult to run from battles. If it kept up like this, any patch of grass would turn into a team wipe and render this challenge just impossible. I had no idea what to do. It took me about an hour to get through that short forest, having to dodge not only trainers, but hope we get lucky so we don't encounter too many wild Pokemon. But making it through to see the crown jewel of Pokemon Black was all worth it. Castellia City for the first time is pretty cool. I love the sweeping vistas, the alive city, rocking docks, and uh, oh, did that guy just flash me in a dark alleyway? Thanks, Nintendo.
Don't get me wrong, Castellia is probably the most vibrant city I've seen in a Pokemon game so far, but nothing compares to the reward we have inside of this building. Yes! The smoke ball. So the smoke ball enables the holder to flee from any wild Pokemon without fail. Honestly, without this, I'm pretty sure the future routes between towns would straight up be impossible. With that, I ended my stream and went to bed, confident that all was going to be fine. Spoiler, all, all was not going to be fine. It was going to be horrible. Oh God. I woke up the next morning and headed to the third gym. Oh, the third gym. We've dealt with one or two poison types throughout the course of this challenge, but there's a whole gym of them? If it's not obvious, poison type Pokemon can't be poisoned. That means our bread and butter poison endeavor strategy that we've been using was dead in the water. I send out Volbeat, but instead of using Double Team as the strategy here, I use the move Trick. Trick swaps held items, which is important because Volbeat is actually holding the Lagging Tail item. Whichever Pokemon holds a Lagging Tail gets decreased priority on all of their moves. Trick gets priority over Whirlipede's move because of the ability Prankster. When Volbeat gives away the Lagging Tail, it causes Whirlipede to effectively always go second. What's cool about this too is that the item is never used up, like the problem we have with Magnemite's limited Orinberries. So Whirlipede's always going to go after Pineco. So that means I can get two Toxic Spikes in for the other two Pokemon. So we get the Toxic Spikes here. Okay, so that's fine, because we have Sturdy. And then we use Toxic Spikes again. So now every Pokemon after Whirlipede will be badly poisoned. Which means then we go into Spirit Tomb. We still go first because of the Lagging Tail. So then we go into Destiny Bond here. And then he's going to kill us with a Poison Tail. Or Struggle Bug also works too. Nice. And then we take it with us with Destiny Bond. So that was that was a really good strat. Okay, so I'm going to send in Aaron. I'm going to let Endeavor here. Um, SmackDown's going to let, you know, whatever. And then I'm going to let Endeavor, which will kill Dwebble instantly. Right? And then it gets poisoned. And then there we go. Awesome. We need to at least stall Leovanny for like, what, eight turns for Toxic? Can you heal in this? Oh, yeah. To make it more difficult, we don't have any healing items in battle. I'm going to protect once at least. Because then we have an extra turn. And then the next one will be 50% chance to protect again. I'm going to go for the second protect. All right, it was going to kill anyways. That's fine. All right, so we need to survive for three turns. I think I just protect here and just hope for the stall of all protects. Right, so there we go. Right, so we protected once. It's gonna die in three turns from now. I'm going to roll protect again and just hope. Nice, yes! Okay, the next one's probably going to fail. Then we hit sturdy and then we protect again. So we have, I think three moves left. Oh my God, okay, okay. Protect again. No! God, no, God! <laughs> okay, so now we have two turns to kill. This is RNG, we gotta protect twice, right? Protect works uh, first time. And then we have a coin flip next. We got the coin flip. Yes! And that's the third gym! <laughs> After defeating Berg, the third gym leader, he cheekily notes that now we have his gym badge, Pokemon up to level 40 will obey us. Thanks, man. We really needed that perk. We had way more difficulty with that gym 3 fight than we should have because of our extreme lack of Orinberries. But that's when inspiration struck from my Twitch chat. Listen closely. Here's how we're going to do this heist. Step one, backtrack to Wellspring Cave and pick up the TM for Thief. Step two, run up and down the local pathway until you see some moving grass. Step three, encounter an Audino. They hold an Orinberry 50% of the time in the wild. Step four, use Thief on the Audino and it doesn't hold the Orinberry? Step five, have the worst luck in the entire world. Step six, acquire the Orenberry. Although it's not the prettiest system in the entire world, we finally have a roundabout way to reliably get Orenberries for our Magnemite strategy. I continue on our long journey before encountering Charon and Professor Juniper in a terminal before the next town over. I know it might seem strange for me to say this because I'm the one who asked you to complete the Pokedex, but please remember to enjoy your journey. No, I don't think I will. If you've played any amount of Pokemon Black or seen the advertisements when you were younger, you'll probably remember the iconic Ferris wheel here in Nimbasa City. Well, let me tell you, I remember it for vastly different reasons than you probably do. N meets us at the bottom of the amusement ride, spouting more propaganda and things on how he's going to liberate Pokemon forever and all that. But when we get off the ride, he battles us. 
From what I've heard, this fight isn't particularly difficult, but wow, I am convinced that this team was crafted specifically to make me fail this challenge. After around 30 minutes of trial and error, I find out that N has a sand dial and a Darumaka, which aren't particularly difficult to defeat if I just poison them and stall like we've been doing up until now. However, N then sends out Scraggy, which has the ability Shed Skin. This means that even if we poison Scraggy like Darumaka and Sandile, on any given turn, it has a 33% chance of just getting rid of the poison. And even if we manage to make it through Scraggy, we face off against Siglyph. It's a flying type, which means it's unaffected by toxic spikes. But even if we were to somehow poison it through, like, let's say the move Toxic, Siglyph has the ability Magic Guard, which means that it can only be defeated by damage through attacks. And as you've seen so far, we don't have many attacking moves. This is the perfect counter to our insane strategy. I'll be real with you guys. I thought this was impossible. I was ready to give up and call it a day. For some reason, all the other fights are not really RNG fests. This one particularly is like all RNG. Okay, so now we're back in that perfect opener again. So Darumaka, I think I keep in, I toxic. Toxic? Okay. Miss? Oh my god! Oh my god! That is so good! Okay, we're still in it. Now we protect. Okay. That was huge. So Scraggy, we switch into Aaron first, so we endeavor, and then we switch back to Magnemite Pineco to Toxic, and then it takes the damage from that. Yes! I'm glad it hit us, because we get one HP now. Okay. And then I go back in the Magnemite, and then I Toxic here. All right, Toxic, that worked. Okay, so it's poisoned, and now it's gonna die. Okay, now we use the Volbeat strategy, right? So we trick here, so we swap our Lagging Tail. Air Cutter, that's fine, it kills us. And then I put in Spirit Tomb, and then I Destiny Bond here. I think this is it! Oh my God! Let's go! <laughs> oh my god, we did it! That was insane! Just narrowly flying by, I take on the coolest looking gym filled with roller coasters and then make it to the gym leader. Using toxic poison strats and a clutch endeavor from Aaron, we cleanly earn the bolt badge and now are allowed to use Pokemon up to level 50. Eric, you already made that joke! But enough strategy and stress. Time to enter in the local Pokemon musical and dress up our spirit tomb. Look at him go. He's so dapper. Yo, wait, that's amazing. He's tipping his hat, but like constantly. All right, back to beating every trainer in the region with our squeaky toys. But interestingly enough, this next route between Nimbasa City and Driftvale doesn't have any wild Pokemon encounters. Yeah. The champion of the region makes Charon and I beat up some preschoolers, but aside from that, we just walk over the Driftvale Bridge to the 5th gym's town. Team Plasma are making trouble again here, but this time, they've taken the deep storage freezer hostage. Luckily, I'm a whiz when it comes to ice puzzles, but Team Plasma had something special up their sleeves. Just one Pokemon. That thing. That thing scares me. One of the Plasma Grunts had a Trubbish. It's a literal garbage bag that was anything but trash. It's a poison type, so we can't use toxic strats. It has the move Double Slap, which hits twice and renders our sturdy abilities useless, making us unable to hit it without being one shot first. Now you might be thinking, oh, just use the Volbeat Lagging Tail strategy used in the third gym. I can't. Trubbish has the ability Sticky Hold, which specifically makes Trick unable to work. Was this single Pokemon going to stop our challenge in its tracks? Yes. Unless we get lucky. Back in Castellia City, I picked up a Quick Claw. Any Pokemon holding a Quick Claw has a 20% chance of going first, regardless of anything in the battle. Smack that bad boy on our Spirit Tomb, get lucky, and we use Destiny Bond for a mutual destruction. The only thing that scares me more than one Trubbish is two in a row, and I'm pretty sure that would single-handedly ruin this challenge. Just narrowly dodge that nightmare. Team Plasma gets scared of our insanity and runs off. Time to go challenge the 5th Gym Leader. I really want to say he's hard, like I really, really do, but oddly, it seems like the most difficult trainers in the game just aren't gym leaders. We tickle Clay's crocodile with some poison and secure ourselves the fifth badge. So this is your fifth badge, huh? If that's so, Pokemon up to level 60 will obey ya. Well, 
That's useless. <laughs> I mean, good to know, but... The next route isn't too eventful, other than seeing some suspicious mushrooms in a research facility. But out of everywhere the light touches, don't go to that shadowy place on the horizon. Charged Stone Cavern. While neat and all with the floating stones and cool visuals for puzzles, Anne is back, and boy, he's back with a vengeance. I begin the battle. He opens with Boldor. I immediately Toxic with Pineco, so I can set up the classic poison stall that we've been doing. When Pineco goes down, I send out Magnemite to stall out the rest of the fight. Okay, and then I protect, and then he dies. Nice, okay, so he doesn't have any potions. Good to know, okay. So Joltik is next. I think I keep in here. Oh, I can't use berries. Second Pokemon in, and we're immediately tripped up. Joltik has the very specific counter to our Magnemite, having the ability Unnerve, which disallows the use of berries in battle. So we'd have to go without that for now. So we have to do Toxic, and then Protect. And then Protect. I think we can still do this, though. If we keep Protecting, it'll hopefully die. If it doesn't die, then all we need to do is Protect twice with Aaron, and we're good. It's fine. But that's not the end of our struggles. N follows up with Pharaoh Seed, which is a steel type and unaffected by the poison strategy we began the battle with. It quickly wipes the rest of our team and I'm forced to reset. I didn't even get to see the last Pokemon, which is another steel type, Clink. All right, enough messing around. It's time to bring in the Doomsday device, the weapon I've been hiding in my back pocket in the fear of every Pokemon trainer, Deerling. You see this cute little button that frolics in the woods under the sunshine? Wrong. I see a demolitionist with murder on the mind. Here's how this adorable, luck-defying killing machine works. I rematch N and start with Volbeat this time, using the classic trick lagging tail strategy so we can go first. Pineco follows up with the toxic spikes and stealth rocks, setting up for the rest of the team. But with that out of the way begins the terror. Deerling first starts with Grass Whistle, in order to put the Boldor to sleep. While it's sleeping, it uses its second move, Substitute, to create a temporary wall. After that's created, it uses as many double teams as possible before Boldor wakes up, and then puts it back to sleep with Grass Whistle again. This increases Deerling's evasiveness. With enough times of the cycle, we can decrease a 100% accurate move to hit only 30% of the time. But that's not the best part. Deerling can't actually do damage with this moveset, so it also knows Baton Pass, which swaps Deerling with any Pokemon of my choice and keeps the stat changes. I switch into Aaron and we go to town. With Stealth Rocks and Toxic Spikes active, I use Roar to keep swapping N's team. Okay, and now we're gonna Roar. So Unnerve plus Poison. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. That is a ton of damage. And then I have a brilliant idea that turns this strategy from good to great. Ooh, yikes. Okay, I'm actually going to use Endeavor here. Nice. That was good. Now I don't have a way to kill it, though. <laughs> I shouldn't have used Endeavor there because I forgot that it had barbs. And if you do a physical attack, then it will do damage to you. So... Pain. Yeah, this wasn't my finest work. I mean, even if I didn't whiff it at the end, there was no way we'd get lucky enough to continue to use Roar like that. So back to the drawing board for two hours. Two hours banging my head against a wall, trying to figure out how to beat this perfectly crafted team for men, designed seemingly to counter all of our Pokemon. Stream chat had some good suggestions on what to do, like, uh, have you tried punching N in the jaw and running past him? But they didn't work for some reason. There was this one idea I had. It was a slim chance, but it only had to work once. I opened with Magnemite, who immediately uses Toxic and stalls out Boulder's death with the Recycle and Protect. Joltik comes in, and then I use one more Toxic to poison it before Magnemite faints. Aaron takes the battlefield and then uses Endeavor, effectively one-shotting the bug. Two down, two to go. But here's when things get crazy. Pharaoh Seed is next, and I send out Volbeat to quickly dispatch Trick Lagging Tail, and then pop out Deerling when Volbeat faints. Deerling uses Grass Whistle to make the Pharaoh Seed sleep. Immediately, I switch into Spirit Tomb to take advantage of it. Alright, slept once. Slept twice. It's fine. 
All right, let's try to use pin missile here. Please, this protect needs to work. Okay, it's fine if it hits us next. Oh, we got three protects in a row. That's actually really sick. Okay, 20% chance. Quick claw destiny bond. Yes! Yes! Quick claw destiny bond! I've been at this for two and a half hours. Oh, finally. Let's go. And we beat N. Oh my God. And we made it out without our sanity intact. N has this lovely piece of dialogue at the end of it all. Why? 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 Why don't you stick the All right. What were we doing again? Right, right, right. The sixth gym. It, it has cannons? What? We do a whole bunch of searching and fetch quests in order to face the gym. But once that's over, I breeze through the puzzle and face off against leader Skyla. She's probably the easiest battle we've had yet. All I have to do is toxic on her swoop out and stall it out until it faints. I do the same thing with Swana and it faints as well. Then I send in Volbeat to use an easy trick to close out the fight. Oh my God, there's a quick attack. All right, hear me out. Quick claw, Destiny Bond. Oh! Oh my god! Are you serious? What is our luck? Like, all jokes aside, we actually did Skyla pretty much first try. I was fully expecting us to take like two, three hours on this. That was crazy. The road to gym number seven was a weird one. We have to go through the aptly named Twist Mountain, which involves multiple mandatory trainer battles, tough puzzles, and a winding maze of platforms and levels. Or we can time travel to the winter season to skip the entire thing. Merry Christmas, everyone. Appropriately, we have the ice gym leader next. At this point, I think it's very evident how confident I've gotten with our level one team. We set up toxic spikes with Pineco, switch into Volbeat for lagging tail and Deerling for evasion, then baton pass over to Magnemite to stall out the rest of Bryson's team. And when I say stall, I mean this Magnemite must have back problems because it carried the rest of the battle. This guy took out the entire gym by itself. Magnemite with the solo kill against the seventh gym leader. Oh my God. Yeah, Magnemite, dude. The Magnemite. After our resounding success, we're ambushed by Pokemon ninjas from the village hidden in the leaf. Wait, no, wrong franchise. Restart. All right, we're ambushed by Pokemon ninjas. They give us a secret message that Lord Getsis will be waiting for us at the top of Dragon Spiral Tower. Whoa, this is cool. Whoa, is something going wild at the top of the tower? Probably the legendary Pokemon. You know, the one that everyone says is up there. That would do it. Ooh, it's N. Whoa! Oh my god! That's so cool! N then flies away on his newfound Zekrom, ready to take on the world and liberate every Pokemon from their owner. As a reminder, this is my first playthrough of Pokemon Black. This plot is wild! All right, so this is the eighth gym leader. We have seven badges so far. Kind of crazy that we've gotten this far, but let's do it. We open the fight with the poison spike strategy, aiming to stall out the fracture. When we protect enough, it faints, and Drayden sends out his second Pokemon, Drudigan. With a quick lagging tail and switch into Spirit Tomb for Destiny Bond, it too goes down quickly. But the pain of challenge runs comes next, Haxorus. Haxorus has the ability Mold Breaker, which is an ability that disables all of the effects of other abilities. It's the one true counter that I was afraid of this entire time. The run killer. The one thing that- wait, what's that? Haxorus only has Mold Breaker in Pokemon White? Oh. Yeah, uh, I totally planned that. I knew it the entire time for sure. Uh, Haxorus in Pokemon Black has Rivalry, which doesn't affect our strategy at all. Cool. We poison it and it faints like the rest of the team. And that is the eighth gym badge. All we have left is the story in the Pokemon League. On our way out of the city, Professor Juniper stops us and gives us some directions. Real, do you regret setting out on your Pokemon journey? Yes. Yes, I do.
the pathway up to Victory Road is largely uninteresting. However, the beauty of seeing Victory Road in the batch check in this game isn't lost on me. Like jokes aside, the sweeping vistas and the experimenting that Game Freak did when making Generation 5 games really broke boundaries for pixel art styles and it shows. I don't get many opportunities to say this, but man, playing through this was breathtaking every step of the way and it's quickly become one of my favorite Pokemon games. Let's see if we can finish this challenge with only the Elite Four standing in our way. The hardest trainers in the game. Pokemon Black does the Elite Four in a different way than most Pokemon games. You're allowed to choose which members to fight in any order you like. We have to conquer Ghost, Dark, Psychic, and Fighting types. Let's face them in order from easiest to hardest. <laughs> just kidding, they're all hard. Did you forget we have level one Pokemon? Jeez, not even watching the video. On a random dice roll, I choose to face the ghost type Chantal first. She sends out Cofagrigus first, and I open with Volbeat with Trick to pave the way for Pineco. Pineco sets up two toxic spikes before fainting, and Magnemite comes out to stall. And we stall. We stall for 26 turns, beating out her Golurk and Chandelure before having to finish Jellicent off with Eren because I ran out of PP. One member down, three to go. But that begs the question, what happens when you run out of PP during these fights? We're required to beat all four members back to back without the Poke Center to restore movesets. Ah, but it pays to think ahead. You see, for the past 30 hours of this challenge, I've been sneakily scouring the entirety of Unova for elixirs and ethers, preparing for this very moment. We're not going to run out of moves, because Magnemite is going to be force-fed all the drugs we found lying on the ground outside. Next Elite Four member is Marshall, fighting type. It's going to be difficult, but before we challenge the Elite Four, I picked up a special item. We're going to use Toxic Spikes on him. And then we're going to go to Magnemite. Now we use Toxic. So it doesn't matter. We actually want Magnemite to die as soon as possible. Because then we're going to sweep his entire team. So we're going to go into Aaron now. And now we're going to use Endeavor. The Storm Throw's fine. It's going to do all the way down to one health. But then, right, we have Sturdy. So we land at one health. Then we use Endeavor, which is going to equalize our HP. And then, because we have a Shell Bell, it heals us all the way back to full. And then he dies. The good news about all of this is that Elite Four Marshall is not going to use his full restores at all. He has no shot to do his full restores. For all intents and purposes, this move is a one shot. Shell Bell is an item that I picked way back in Drift Veil vale City and it heals you for one eighth of the damage that you deal. Since Eren has 12 HP, we need to do 88 hit points of damage in order to heal back to full and proc sturdy again. There's a surprisingly low amount of Pokemon with that kind of HP until this moment, so this was the time to test out that strategy. And oh boy, who knew a level 1 Pokemon would be so overpowered when facing these Titans? Ugh, and I really want to say that our next opponent Grimsley was tough, but with functionally the same lineup as Marshall, it went the same way. Although he did say this during the fight, which had me a little confused. I never thought you would use that move! <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy, man. Three down, one to go. Psychic type Caitlyn was shaping up to be the hardest Elite Four member of the bunch. She opens up with Reuniclus, which has the ability Magic Guard, preventing it from being affected from poison. But to deal with this nuisance, I um, use Destiny Bond with Spirit Tomb to take it out immediately. Can you guess what happens next? Yep, Toxic Spikes into Aaron, Shell Bell, Endeavor. What a dunk. But you see what happens here? I was presented with some of the easiest fights that we've come across in the entire game. The champion though, I've been worrying about that fight since the challenge began. High level strategy with a trainer that boasts six Pokemon? I couldn't even prepare for it. I've never played this before. I slowly make my way towards the final platform when I discover the champion Alder conversing with our best friend N. I wonder what they could be talking about. From the ground up, rise up, the castle of Team Plasma. What? Uh, that's insane. What is going on? Man, I really wonder uh, what the operating cost of something like that is. I mean, the hydraulics that you would probably need to lift a building that high. The civil engineers must be quaking. <clears throat> we storm the castle to stop Team Plasma from forcefully liberating Pokemon and stumble upon N's room in the meantime. My disappointment is continuously immeasurable, and my day is ruined.
I make my way further up the castle to the throne room, where we discover N sitting as king. He threatens us with Zekrom, his legendary dragon, and we counter Reshiram, who comes to our aid. One developer at Nintendo really innovated with these designs, outing themselves as a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan. I mean, come on, like Red Eyes Black Dragon versus Blue Eyes White Dragon? Joey Wheeler and Seto Kaiba about to go to the Shadow Realm in this game. But to my dismay, the final battle of the game is against N. The one man who's given us so much trouble this entire challenge. The one trainer who almost made me give up in Charge Stone Cave. The letter of the alphabet that comes after M, the only person with the perfect strategy to counter my team. This is how it went. We'll just trick here, right? Send out the lagging tail. It's going to kill. That's fine. So Zekrom goes second. We Spear Tomb, Destiny Bond. Okay. Fusion Bolt. All right, so we take the Zekrom at least. We're going to send out Pineco. We Toxic Spike. We Magnemite. Toxic. All right, then I put out Aaron. And then now we Endeavor. Aaron actually the OP. All right, kills Caracosta. Heals up to full. And then Clink Clang. Okay, so Clink Clang is poison. I'm going to Endeavor here. So why was... Wait, no, this isn't a Clink Clang. Because it's poison. This is Zoroark then. Yeah! It's a Zoroark! Doesn't matter though, because it's dead anyways! All right, all right, that was good, that was good. All right, now the real Clink Clang. We keep battling. Okay, so now I Endeavor, Flash Cannon, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going like, to cut here. Actually, no. Oh, wait, we can't win anyways. We're going like, to cut, right? We live, but we can't kill the other two Pokemon. Because Clink Clink dies here. Vanillix is out. Unless Vanillix misses somehow, then we can't do this, right? So we Endeavor here. Oh my god! <laughs> Dude, the luck! No chance we just won! Archeops, flying type, right? Doesn't get poisoned. But that's okay, because we're going to Endeavor anyways. Okay, we got to save this though. Don't forget, he's going to use a full restore, right? So I'm going to protect. Oh, he didn't use a full restore. Uh, we cut for the win. Here we go. Aaron used cut. Oh my God. Player defeated Team Plasma N. We did it. After 32 hours, I finally beat Pokemon Black with only, wait, what? Since you know the truth, you must be eliminated. Chat, do we get a free heal? Do we get a free heal right here, chat? Please tell me we get a free heal. It auto heals our Pokemon. <laughs> okay, we're good. Step aside, old man. Have you heard of our Lord and Savior Poison Stall? Cofagrigus goes down with Magnemite Recycling. Aaron takes down the Buffalant with Endeavor. Hydreigon faints to a stall. Seismitoad with Endeavor. Electros stall in the piece de resistance. Spirit Tomb finishing Gedzis' Bisharp with the tried and true Destiny Bond. After I demolished your kid, did you think you'd do any better? All right, as I was saying, after 33 hours, I finally beat Pokemon Black with only level one Pokemon. <laughs> What's next? beating Pokemon Black 2 without taking any damage? So, we are playing Pokemon Black 2 without taking any damage. Oh, god damn it. 